First of all, don't trust the tier list on YouTube right now. How can you tell the performance without actually using it? This is common sense, isn't it? Hello, I'm Storyteller. I remember, so you don't have to. Since I made the Net5 recommendation video, so so many subscribers have asked which LD Net5 is OP, what the LD Net5 tier is, and what the top 3 LD Net5 monsters are. First of all, don't trust the tier list on YouTube right now. People who sell accounts and YouTubers who want to get high views are talking about LD Net5 tier. This is SS tier, this is OP, blah blah. But how can you tell the performance without actually using it? This is common sense, isn't it? LD Net5 is so important in Summoner's War Chronicle, and I don't know how they can say it so irresponsibly. I'm a victim of people who just read books and talk about tears only in the game. That's why I hate them and why I don't want to answer LD Net5 performance questions on the live streaming that I don't know. Anyway, there was a lot of wrong information and a lot of people asking, so I ended up making it. I will talk about LD Net5 tier. But first, know this. What I'm talking about now is March 2023 based on the Korean server. And the evaluation can change at any time due to balance patches. Let me give you an example. In the Korean server, Light Pioneer was called it OP in the past. Everyone wanted him and the account he was on was highly regarded, but due to the balance patch, the reviver meta ended and he became a rarely used monster. Lastly, the performance I'm talking about is mainly based on PvP, especially real-time arena. Most of Summoner's War Chronicles PvE content can be cleared without LD Net5. Later, if you put LD Net5, you won't be able to clear it. Now, as the official partner creator of Summoner's War Chronicle, I will speak with a sense of responsibility. I will divide the tiers into S, A, B, and C. Think C is garbage. First, let me tell you about the LD Net5 I have. I can say this accurately because I grew them myself and have used them in the arena. If you want to refute it, try growing it as much as I do. Light Polar Queen, Tier S. It is not listed here, but my global server account has the Light Polar Queen. Her first skill increases the enemy's cooldown and reduces mana by 2 if it is a summoner. It has a wide range and is very useful, but its slow skill speed makes it easy to avoid, and it consumes 5 mana. However, <laughs> it is her second skills that are highly regarded. Instead of reducing the summoner's HP by 10%, it greatly reduces the skill cooldown of summoner and monsters and increases the ultimate gauge. Summoner skill cooldown reduction of 80% is good for any summoner, and because of her, the summoner's ultimate that is used before the opponent is very powerful in PvP. Since she only specialized in reducing cooldowns, there is a condition that the specs of the rest of the monsters and summoner must be strong. But that is not a disadvantage. Infinite Provocation Cliff, Infinite Damage Skill Rubia, Infinite Resurrection, and Recovery Kina. All of this is possible because of her. Of course, using her doesn't mean you can win unconditionally, but it doesn't change the fact that you are in advantage position in PvP with her. Light Beast Monk, Tier C. It is a monster that has been buffed several times since its first release, but cannot be used. First skill gives recovery and skill acceleration, but the amount of mana is heavy, 4 mana. Fire Beast Monk costs less mana and removes all harmful effects and heal. What do you like better? Skill 2 is useless because it has a small range, low damage, and slow movement. Level 2 bleeding is less than level 1 continuous recovery. So in the end, there is only one level 1 attack. Another friend gives silence to enemy, a very good debuff in PvP. What could be better? Light Mermaid, Tier A. 
healing allies with no more hits, shielding with first skill, and increasing recovery and reducing damage received with second skill. Light Mermaid is the best pure healer, I think. Her disadvantage is that her skills are proportional to her attack, and she is very weak against unrecoverable, and she cannot remove harmful effects. However, if there are no harmful effects and unrecoverable, it shows a recovery ability that is superior to anything else. Light Vampire Tier A Light Vampire have a powerful single damage skill that cost only 2 mana. Most skill dealers' skills are 3 mana, but Light Vampire can use skill twice with only 4 mana. Therefore, it is overwhelmingly advantageous in fight between pure dealers. And it is possible to survive without dying through the passive. If you can't kill the Light Vampire, you will get hit hard with the next second skill and you will see the Light Vampire recover its HP with Drain. However, the downside is that the passive activation condition is 20% of its HP, so it can die very easily with a single powerful shot. Also, even though he is a not normal hit dealer, he needs to increase his attack speed because his skill composition is proportional to his speed. Nonetheless, he is very good in PvP as a strong single dealer with the ability to use his skill twice for 4 cost. Light Jack o' Lantern Tier B It is a monster that neutralizes the enemy with defense down through first skill, steal and block beneficial effect through second skill. In particular, defense down and block beneficial effect are very lesser to enemy summoner. And his passive is special like the Water Occult Girl, he has a passive that turns CC into wide area attack up. Cooldown 7 seconds, attack up last 16 seconds. However, since he needs to be CC'd himself, if you don't have an enemy with wide area CC, it's practically the same as a passive without it. Also, he has 2 attack skills, so if his attack power is low, he has no presence. But his stats are low because his job is a supporter, not a dealer. However, it's a good option to consider against wide area CCs like Fire Panda. Light Pirate Captain Tier C Block beneficial effects through first skill, attack down and defense down through second skill, and additional first skill. Even the Assassin, Dealer, woohoo! If you expected to neutralize the opponent powerfully, you were wrong. The mana cost of second skill is 5 and the link skill condition is invincible. Are you confident enough to cast invincibility when he using a 5 cost mana skill? It's a skill dealer but its core skill is 5 mana. The link skill conditions are also very difficult to meet. I tried to use him somehow but ended up restoring it due to the high mana cost and ridiculous conditions. Light Oracle Tier C No matter how much I think about it, it seems that the Fire Oracle has taken away her passive. First skill is the same as Fire Oracle, only burns into the bleeding. Second skill removes only one harmful effect and does not heal instantly. Does it look good with continuous recovery and invincibility? The range of invincibility is smaller than that of a fire priest and if time passes to 5 mana, you are on the verge of dying right away. Is continuous recovery enough? Unlike the fire oracle, there is no passive, so there is no mana recovery performance. If you really want 6 second invincibility, use fire priest instead. Light Beetle Knight Tier A a tanker that specialized in remove beneficial effect and recovery. With first skill, you can not only remove beneficial effect, but also aim for the block beneficial effect. Skill 2 increases the level of beneficial effect, use provocation, and continuously heals to allies. The beneficial effect level increases is unique, and I once built an Iron War with a Light Mermaid and Water Chimera. With the Dark Polar Queen? <laughs> Anyway, depending on how you use it, you can create a lot of synergy. It is also increases the maintenance power of allies by applying a level 2 continuous recovery. 
Also, he is immune to enemy provocations and when attacked, remove the opponent's beneficial effect. However, it is important for a taunt tanker to taunt the enemy's main dealer quickly, but the timing is often disappointing compared to Fire Panda's 3 mana. Other than that, he is a very good tanker. Oh, but if you were Cliff, you wouldn't feel good because Cliff is a tanker. Dark Polar Queen Tier S There is no wide area dealer stronger than her in this game. The greater the number of targets, the stronger the damage, and if damage deal to more than level 3, the greater the damage. Damage deal to above, even if an ally gets hit, it automatically accumulates on her. And her ultimate is the strongest wide area attack in this game. There are no other effects other than damage, but the damage is strong enough to ignore it. If you have the confidence to protect her, she will destroy everything in one shot. Dark Desert Queen Tier A She removes immunity with her first skill and performs a wide area attack with her second skill. Is it too simple? Let's see her passive. When she attacks with a skill, she applies silence and defense reduction to enemies. The range of second skill is also quite wide and silence and defense down are very lesser. However, her mana cost is high at 4 mana for both of them, and she is very vulnerable in front of immunity. Can you erase it with first skill? It is a single target skill and cost 4 mana, and it only erases immunity. Silence and defense down do not apply. She is not used well in PvP because she has no presence when using a wide area skill and single skill once. However, she shows the best performance in PvE content where silence is applied. Large range, defense down, silence, try it on Spiral of Ascension and you will see how good it is. Even in Galagos Ruins, Battlefield, Naraka Raid that will be added later, she shows excellent performance. Dark Archangel Tier C Do you think a character representing Summoner's War would be good? Absolutely not. There are lots of guys who say Dark Angel is OP, but I want to ask if you've tried it yourself. First skill erase immunity and beneficial effect, and cast a damage taken up that cannot be removed. If the opponent is in damage taken up state, you can use Ruler's Sword and Heavenly Sword. His downside is that they both have a high mana cost at 4 mana, it takes 8 mana to use skill 1 and skill 2. Do you think it will work if you don't put the soul link on him? The mana cost is the same, so it's random which one to use first. With damage drain on the passive, do you think the retention will be good? Due to the assassin AI, he runs away if he has low HP. He has to fight to recover when his HP is low, not running away. He has only one use. When casting a damage taken up that cannot be removed from the boss content. Other than that, there is no existence value of Dark Archangel. Dark Sky Dancer Tier B She is a supporter, but it's more accurate to see her as a dealer with healing. Her first skill recovers HP, and if she has attack up, she applies continuous recovery. Her second skill hits the target 4 times with 3 mana, and if she has attack up, it deals additional damage that ignores the effect of damage mitigation. 1728% damage with 3 mana and can ignoring damage mitigation effects such as shield, invisibility, and defense up. Whoa! In addition, her passive reduces damage from wide area attacks, and when hit by wide area attack, she has a high chance to use the attack up buff on herself. The downside is she is not good at either damage dealer or healer. As a healer, it's all about 4 mana recovery without debuff remover. In addition, since it is an attack proportional healer, it has low HP and defense compared to other healers, so it is easy to die. As a dealer, the 3 cost skill is good, 
but it requires an attack of buff and has a fatal disadvantage of reducing the attack of buff with a certain probability when using the skill. The passive is definitely high performance, but the downside is that it is meaningless against a single dealer. If her spec is very high and the opponent has many wide area dealers, she shows the best performance. Anyway, I made a tier list for the LDNet5 that I have myself. I'm confident that the LDNet5 tier list I've created will be much more accurate than the tier list that other people talk about without even trying it out. Next, I will make a tier list of LDNet5 monsters I met while doing real-time arena in Korea. My real-time arena tier is a little bit high, so the specification of the LDNet5 I met were quite high. I think I can talk about the performance from the point of view of the victim who has dealt with it. To be honest, I have no idea about performance of LDNet5 which is not mentioned in this and the next video. I haven't used it and I've never met it, so how can I rate it? Anyway, I hope you won't be fooled by the other nonsense tier list, and if it was helpful, please share this video. Anyway, take a long look, goodbye.